The focus of this video is the sliding filament model, which is a theory that proposes how the myofilaments within skeletal muscle fibers and within the myocardium cause contraction of the muscle, where the thin filaments actually slide to diminish that H zone that we've been talking about in the last few videos. And I'm going to show this in three steps, depending on what textbook you read. This may be outlined in four or five steps. And because this is a cycle, we can start anywhere. As a result, I'm just going to start at the top and we're going to run through this a few times. But at the top, what we see right here, this is the power stroke. This is where the thin filaments on the left and the right have been slid to diminish the age zone. To be clear, there should be two F-actin filaments for each thin filament, or I should say there should be two F-actin strands for each thin filament. And certainly there should be myosin heads and thin filaments on the bottom. But for simplicity, I've just drawn it as such. Also, this is under this model is under the assumption that calcium has been released from the sarcoplasmic reticulum, has bound to troponin, and moved tropomyosin up and out of the way, liberating the binding site on the G-actin molecules. That's why I don't even have tropomyosin or troponin drawn in these images. Once again, this is a power stroke where we have a diminished eight zone. These are the myosin heads, which are described as being in the fired position. They are at roughly 45 to 90 degrees. From the power stroke, we move here. And the big difference is we no longer see the myosin heads bound to the thin filament. And that is due to the binding of ATP to the myosin heads. I've only illustrated that with two myosin heads, but the binding of ATP to the myosin head detaches the thick filament from the thin filament. As can be seen here, the myosin heads are still in the fired position, but they are no longer bound to the thin filament. And because they're no longer bound to the thin filament, we see a widening of the H zone, much wider than we see up in here in the power stroke. When ATP hydrolyzes or splits into ADP and 1-phosphate, we get formation of the cross bridge. That is to say the myosin head reconnects with the thin filament. To be clear, ATP stands for adenosine triphosphate, three phosphates. During hydrolysis, we lose one of those phosphates. So this is adenosine diphosphate, di meaning two, and here's that third one that's split off from it. ADP and this phosphate remain bound to the myosin head. We have a cross bridge formation, that is to say the Thick filament is physically connected or adhering to the thin filament, but no shortening of the myofilaments or the muscle fiber has occurred yet. And that doesn't occur until ADP and that one phosphate depart from the myosin heads. And that's what results in the power stroke. So here, there is no firing of the myosin heads but we've now fired and that causes this shortening of the muscle fiber, hence the power stroke. Until ATP binds again to the myosin head, the muscle or the filaments are described as being in the rigor state. They're in a very brief period of sustained contraction until ATP rebinds to it, which detaches the myosin heads. ATP hydrolyzes and we get cross bridge formation, ADP and the phosphate departs, and we get another power stroke. That is the sliding filament model or theory of muscle contraction.